What's up everyone? I'm Chris and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. Now, if like me, you've been stressing for a while trying to figure out how to expose some controls for a material in sequences so that you can animate them, fear not. I'm going to show you something called the material control parameter. It sounds really complicated, it's really not. It's super simple, but it's going to make your life a whole lot better. So, let's get going. Before we begin, I need to do the obligatory ask for likes and subscribes. I really appreciate it. It really does help out and it just takes you a few seconds. So just hit those buttons below for me. Thank you very much. So one thing when I was trying to figure this out for me, I couldn't for the life of me figure out why I couldn't get material parameters exposed to me in Sequencer. It took me a while, but I figured out this is because I actually need to add a controller in the middle that takes the material parameters in on itself and then hands them off to the sequencer. This particular node is called the material parameter collection node. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use that to get access to all the controls that you need. So here I have removed everything to do with the material parameter collection so that we can recreate it from scratch. So on this outer ring on my logo here is controlled by this glow shader, um, which I have over here. And the thing that I want access to is the intensity, which is I've actually got controlled by this value here. So if I just pump that up to one, it goes super, super bright. Let's put that back to zero and it turns it off. And that's what I want. I want the glow to be off at the start of the animation and then I want it to ramp up and turn it on as we go through. Now, one might hope that I can just drag the glow shader into the sequencer and drop it in there. Alas, unfortunately, no. We need to create that middleman. So let's come back here. And the middleman, as I mentioned, is a material parameter collection. Now, if we right click and go to materials, material parameter collection, we need to give it a name. So let's call it um, Glow MPC for Material Parameter Collection. Hit return. Now I'm just going to open this up, show you what's inside it at the moment. There are two sections where you can create new variables that are going to be able to be exposed to the sequencer. So you have scalar parameters, which are just zero to one or single values, and then vectors, which are multiple values. We're going to start with just the scalar parameters first. Um, let's add a new one in. So just click the little plus button here and see we've got a new scalar parameter. And if I drop this down, it has a default value. Now we're, I know we're going to use this for the glow shader and I want it off at the start. So I'm going to leave the default value at zero for now. Let's give it a name, something useful to us. I'm going to call it, um, let's call it glow underscore value so that we can identify it later on. I'm going to save out of that and I'm going to come back to the glow shader. Now I want that parameter to control this constant here. And that's actually the wrong way of thinking and that's where my trouble came in right at the start. I don't want that value to control that. I need to replace this value with the value from that uh, material parameter control. So I'm going to hit tab in here and I'm going to type collection and we can see we get collection parameter come up. I click that and get this new little box. This is now going to link to the material parameter collection that we created in our content browser. You can see at the moment it says none at the top. Um, and the collection, it's already auto selected it for me because it's actually quite intelligent. But just to show you how you would go about that, if you select the node under collections, it shows you all the parameter collections you have in your scene. We called it glow NPC. So we know we want that one. So I'm going to select that. And then under parameter name, if I click the drop down, you see we have glow underscore value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just delete this parameter and rehook my multiply 
into that one instead. If I hit save, nothing changes because the default value was zero. But if I come back to my Glow NPC and I now set this to, let's say, one, you can see in the background that the Glow ring has started to glow. So let's just save that. And now I can drag this Glow NPC that we created into Sequencer. I'm just going to drag and drop that in there. And you'll see at the top here is the Glow NPC. And I can add a parameter for the Glow value. And that now gives me access to that which is currently set to one, as you can see, where I can keyframe it. So I want it say keyframed on there. And let's just say, I don't know, it's off there. And that will gradually ramp up. Now to expand upon that a little bit, we can actually use this MPC for multiple materials. It doesn't have to be one per material. For instance, in this scene, I found that once everything was on, I, the, the actual logo itself was a bit too dark. So coming back to my Glow MPC, I actually added in new elements in the scalar. So I'm going to call this one, say, logo underscore glow. And I have separate materials here for the actual logo inside. So this double click this one and then I actually have a constant value controlling the emission just in case I needed to increase that so again I can do the same thing type in collection get the collection parameter the collection I want is going to be the glow NPC the parameter you can see now I have two glow value for logo glow I'm going to stick that in there save that and if I come back to Sequencer again, the Glow NPC, I can actually now add the logo Glow. And that will, if I increase that, it's not looking very pretty, but helps you get the point across. Okay, quickly before we go, let's just jump onto the vector parameters. Let's say I want to change the color of the Glow. I want it to go from blue to red or something like that. But that's done through the vector parameters. So I'm just going to add a new vector parameter. I'm going to call it, let's call it um, glow color. I'm going to save that. And let's come back to our glow shader. So the node that controls the color is plugged into the base color and the multiplier that eventually goes into the emission. So let's do the same with this collection parameter. You can see I'm instantly getting an error. And the reason I'm getting that error is because I haven't actually told it what collection parameter it is using yet. So let's just select that, tell it we're going to use the glow in PC. The parameter collection is going to be glow color. Now, if I save that, you see it goes black because in the glow in PC, we left the default value to black. So we just need to do a little bit of tweaking. We could either set the default value to blue in here, but I'm going to come down to my sequencer where I already have the glow MPC here. I'm going to add a parameter and select the new vector one, the glow color. And let's just say at this frame, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to change it to blue. So let's put it all the way up to blue. Put that to one. There we go. And we can see it's blue and I'm just going to keyframe the other two while we're here. And then as we scrub through the timeline, we could say we wanted blue down to zero and we wanted the red all the way up to one. And just make sure they're all keyframed. And then as we scrub through the timeline, you can see it changes color. So as you can see, it is actually super simple to do. It's just not immediately obvious because it's not a traditional kind of workflow. I really hope that video helped you. If it did, please, again, please do like and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or any problems. I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can. And in the meantime, take it easy.